it is time. It is that time of the year. What is good, everyone? And welcome back to yet another video. Today, we're going to be discussing what is in my camera bag 2020. Sir. What? Sorry, sir. Um, uh, actually, that's that's uh, that's next month's video. Wait, what? I'm I'm pretty sure that was scheduled in for this week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, no, sir. Um, it's actually penciled in here that this week we are doing a, a Lightroom tutorial, I believe. Oh yeah. Okay, I remember now. Yeah. Yep. It says here, Lightroom tutorial on skin tones. Well, uh, it looks like we filmed all of that B-roll for, for nothing. What is good everyone and welcome back to yet another video. Today we're going to be discussing editing, photo editing, Lightroom. As a matter of fact, a particular tool in Lightroom that is going to help your portrait photography and help your skin tones when it comes to editing. The amazing people that we all know and love over at Adobe have actually implemented a tool in Lightroom, a new tool. When I say new, it's about six months old, I would say. And it's going to be an absolute game changer going forward when editing portrait photos. You're taking pictures of people, you want to get those amazing skin tones on point, this tool is really going to help. As a lot of you know who watched last week's video, I had the opportunity to go up to the Isle of Skye to Scotland and shoot a couple of projects up there. I was up there for a week and we shot a ton of stuff and one of the things that we had to shoot while we were up there was a campaign for the people over at ZRK, which is this hoodie that I'm currently wearing and you may have seen some of their stuff over on my Instagram and on their Instagram, I do a lot of photography for them and have started working closely with them very, very recently. Whilst we were up there, we actually had one whole dedicated day to shoot the entire campaign. So from nine to six, we literally had the whole day dedicated to shooting this campaign. And the locations that we chose to shoot, we actually didn't even like have in mind. Those are two locations that we found, which we drove past, right? We had one which had these really cool shipping containers, which looked really like street and sort of rustic. And then this other location we found was just literally on the side of the road. And there were loads of tractors and just tons and tons of logs and trees just stacked on top of each other and we thought that would be a really cool place to shoot uh, this sort of clothing line. Of course we shot a whole bunch of portraits that day or well, when I say we uh, Ali and Isaac took a load of portraits and I just kind of stood there and looked pretty and modeled I guess and that is why today in this week's tutorial I will talk a bit about skin tones and portrait photography and how you can get your skin tones to looking perfect absolutely Depending on where you are shooting your portraits, the light is gonna impact your skin tones depending on where you are. So if you're shooting in the city, you're gonna probably get a lot cooler skin tones like blues and pinks. Whereas if you're shooting in the forest or at like a sunset, you're gonna get a lot warmer, a lot more yellowy green skin tones, I would say. So depending on where you are, the light is gonna impact your skin tones from the, from the get-go. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get those skin tones to like the perfect place, if that makes sense, because you don't want it to go too green and start looking like Shrek or you don't want it to go too like orange and you start looking like you've just had an overdose of fake tan and you're just too orange and people just think you look like a, I don't know a Satsuma or something so you don't want to kind of go over those two like marks you don't want your skin tones to look almost fake or unrealistic I would say you want to keep that nice medium in between and just have that really rich nice natural looking skin tones when you're doing your portraits some of you watching right now probably already know about this tool but for others who don't know about it I think this is a really, really helpful tool that Adobe have added into Lightroom. Usually I would play around with the HSL sliders. So if my skin tones were looking a little bit too orangey red, I'd move the slider more towards the yellowy green side. Or if my skin tones were looking a bit too yellow or green, I'd move it more towards the, the orange side. For the most part, this would work. But the reason why I spoke about the photos at the beginning and the ones that we took up in Scotland, when you have a photo that have the same sort of hues in the background, like the ones that we took against the logs sometimes I want to change the background color or the wood to look a bit more ready orange but then I would end up impacting my skin tones and then I would end up looking red and orange like the character from inside out the angry one which I don't want at all and this tool is amazing for balancing out those skin tones so that you don't impact the rest of the photo and you can only impact like your skin so if I wanted to and I wanted to change the color of the the oranges or the reds in the background and move them 
them more towards a red or dark orange, I wouldn't end up impacting my skin tones and I can keep my skin tones exactly how I want it to by separating them from the background color. So we're gonna jump into Lightroom. I'm gonna quickly show you how to do this. So you wanna have your photo open. What you wanna do is you wanna hit your brush tool on the top right and just very, very accurately go over the skin tones. If you want to be as accurate as possible, hit O on your keyboard and it will bring up this sort of like red sort of light, I guess, which knows or you know where you're sort of painting. Then if you wanna hit this little thing called the auto mask, once you hit that, Lightroom will basically detect where you're sort of coloring in or where you're sort of highlighting. So you won't end up impacting anything behind you or the background or anything like that. So once you've done that and you're happy, you then wanna go over to the sliders on the right and go over to the hue slider, which is just above the saturation slider. And you just wanna slide it a little bit over to the right or a little bit over to the left. And you can see that it's only impacting the area that you have brushed in. Usually for this photo, I probably wanna go a little bit more to the right so that I keep that separation between my background and my skin tones. Then you wanna hit enter and then that is pretty much it. That is done. That is the best way I would say to get your skin tones to look perfect and still want to keep that separation between you and the background so that you're not affecting the background if you want it to be a bit more red or a bit more yellow you won't be affecting your skin tones whatsoever as well if you find that your skin tones are a little bit too saturated you could always turn that down with the saturation slider or if you feel that they're a bit too flat you can always up the saturation depending on your photo so yeah this tool has been absolutely amazing for when editing portraits if you knew about this already then great but for those of you who didn't know about this already hopefully this has helped if you you did like this video and it was helpful please leave a like rate and subscribe if you are new to the channel the new pov is still in the works usually i upload one pov every month but i'm working quite hard on this one this one's a little bit different so just bear with me and i shall see you all very very soon in the next one take care peace really hot in here really made a mistake by wearing a hoodie when I record. I do this all the time as well. I'm not surprised. Why am I just wearing the thickest hoodie I own in a small room with lights? I just don't make good decisions, do I? And I should learn. I literally complain about this every single time I film and I end up coming out like, <laughs> I can't breathe. Just fucking wear a t-shirt, mate. What's wrong with you?